As the world commemorates the sacrifices and struggles of workers and labor, we'll take a look at the welfare of the Nigerian worker as extends the industrial action by another two months. As Ramadan is the most important and holiest month in the Islamic calendar, clerics have urged Muslim faithfuls to make charity a duty in order to gain multiple rewards from Allah. What is the significance of Eid al Fitri? And don't forget, we also will be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Good morning, thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. And I am Messi Boko. It's good to know that you're on the other side of the divide. Happy holiday. Happy holidays to you, Mercy. No, you, you shouldn't be telling me happy holidays. Workers' Day holiday. was May Day yesterday. No, don't, don't say that to me. But it's fine. Thank you. I mean, we're here. You're not a Nigerian worker. So, yes. We say so happy holiday. It's not a holiday for us now. Happy holiday to Nigerians. <laughs> happy holidays to those who are actually holidaying. And happy holidays to Nigerian workers, generally. All right, we'll just uh, move on straight to top trending. Uh, we're starting with something that's not really so cheerful. Uh, reports uh, reaching us uh, indicate that um, a building has collapsed, a three-story building actually, uh, around the Ebutimeter area of Lagos State. And from what we hear, uh, 20 persons so far you know, have been rescued. And that's according to the Lagos State Emergency Man uh, Management Authority, LASEMA. But uh, many are still feared trapped. Mostly the incidents of um, building collapse are one that keeps, um, you know, increasing and in, um, over time in Lagos, not just Lagos, Nigeria. I thought um, by now uh, the issue of building collapse would actually be have been taken or brought under control with all the sensitization and all that. But yet, what we see is that uh, another one just collapsed that late last night uh, here in Lagos. Well, it, it's uh, it's really really sad. And you, if you follow the story, uh, you probably want to say that it's not like it's a new building. Because we know that the Lagos state government had already um, made a plan or made a move against building collapse and saying we're going to ensure that this doesn't happen. And so for all new buildings, there should be a certification of fitness for habitants in this residence. Okay, so, but have we also thought about some of these buildings that have existed prior to this time, not new buildings? I know that this might just be, you know, around the fact that the Ikoyi building collapse was just major and we talk about new buildings coming up. But have we also thought about, you know, buildings that have existed prior to this time? Because I feel that for everything, you know, there's a lifespan, including your phone, it has a lifespan, everything has a lifespan including our lives. So you, you get to a point where it has expired, it has expired, and so it should not be there. But it's really, really sad. I mean, looking at that picture, you ask yourself uh, how many persons would survive. According to the report, at the time where this incident actually happened, it was reported that uh, the rescue team was not available. You didn't have anyone around, and so uh, those around this environment had to you know, try to figure it out and sort themselves out. It's quite um, sad. But we need to think out of the box. We constantly say we have to prevent this. I feel like it's not entirely on the government. No, it's All not. hands must be on deck. Uh, we need to be involved. So um, let's even say at the time where you have some of this building that's been erected, have they followed the due procedures? Do you follow it? Do you also need government to be on top of your case? before you do the right thing. So this boils down to everybody doing the right thing. Yes, we know that we cannot take government out of the equation. The Lagos State government needs to you know, wake up to all of this. It's been a menace for us, and we have to find a way to solve the problem. Prior to this time, we were thinking that, oh, it has to be with new buildings, we have to get certification, and what have you, but now, I mean... Well, yeah, it's not, it's not entirely for new buildings. This, well, like you said, this uh, is an old building. Well, some buildings, if you, if you go around um, the Butimeta area of Lagos, uh, you know that uh, some of the buildings are actually very old ones, and they, they, they predate um, our independence. <laughs> totally you know, and uh, some of them had this um, Brazilian architecture, and um, they're really, you know, 
structured in a particular way. But one thing I should actually point out in all of this is that even as much as and these buildings are old, I'm sure there's what we call distress signs for buildings. And uh, over time, maybe, I'm sure the buildings must have shown or indicated some sign of distress. Uh, and uh, some buildings don't just collapse them. Um, just all at once. Before you know, they collapsed, they would have given uh, some sort so of distress. So you probably see a crack. Yes, maybe cracks, or maybe it is tilting towards um, the left or the right. Sometimes all of these happens, and um, when these things happen, it's actually uh, the duty of um, the occupants, the landlord, you know, to make sure that um, the right things are done, so it doesn't really, you know, lead to a collapse. Uh, eventually, but most times you see people living in distressed houses, and uh, you'd wonder how can people. You know, just take um, their lives, not, they don't take their lives seriously because at the end of the day, if these buildings give way, they would lose properties, they would lose lives. So why, why would you live in a house that is distressed? And uh, oh, I know there, there are issues of poverty, standard of living and everything, but then your life should come first before anything, really. Because when you live in those buildings, anything could happen at any time. Sometimes you might not even get any sign. But when you start seeing signs of distress, it's the best thing to do is um, call the landlord or the uh, whoever is in charge of the house to order so something can be done or you move out from that particular house you get. So uh, it's quite, a, I mean, it's a lot for people to deal with because you have talked about the issue of understanding when the building is distressed, mm. probably if, you know, you rented this apartment, right? Mm. But do people really understand all of this? So it, it, it's, it's a lot to deal with. At the end of the day, how do you understand? I mean, you pay for a house, probably, let's just say it's a rented apartment. Most people don't do that due diligence. No, no, but you, you have to understand. What, what should you be looking out for cracks, if you have to? You know, apart from the cracks, what if you don't have the very obvious cracks and it could just be foundational issues or mm. things that are not very obvious to you know, the physical? And what if they don't understand what that means? It could just be a crack. No one can actually tell. But uh, like, like we rightly stated, it, it's a lot of work. We know that the government has a responsibility, but the and contractors, the I, I don't know, but like with every other product, you have a lifespan. Uh, <laughs> things would exist. It should get to a point where it expires. So you got to do we even factor all of this? Yeah, do do we really well. factor all of this? That. It's really, really sad. And we're hoping that... Um, Lives are not lost. That's the most important thing for us. We, we hope we haven't gotten any reports as regards, um, you know, life being lost. But we're going to look at an official statement uh, right here quickly. And let's see um, how that pans out. An official statement has been put out as regards uh, the building collapse in a Bute meta. Uh, so quickly, here is what we have. Okay, so uh, as, as soon as we're able to, you know, bring that up, then uh, we can put out that particular right. statement. Yeah, so we'll just, uh, we'll just uh, move on to uh, the next uh, top trending for the day. And uh, it is uh, someone who was uh, laid off just barely a month uh, into her employment. And um, Mercy, the issue of the <laughs> R factor, you know, came into Just play. allow me rest. <laughs> <laughs> Not rest in peace, <laughs> but just have a great time this month. Huh? Uh, why are you laughing? Go ahead. No, because uh, lots of people have um, several um, issues with their speech, uh, with their, with their pronunciation, and um, you know, for some profession, you just have to know uh, the job ethics and uh, just know that uh, some things. Uh, are not allowed and some things could be worked on, some things could be perfected, you know. I don't want to say some things, but I'm not perfect as it is. I know I have my own drawbacks, but I know how to go around them. You know, so when it really becomes too obvious, for instance, uh, if you want to call, um, are you angry <laughs> with me, you know? And some people even have the age factor. I'm not trying to make a mess of them, make fun of them, but you have them like, yeah, are you all right? And things like that. And then, <laughs> how did he say? Are you all right? Instead of, are you all right? You know, you hear things like, are you all right? You know, people have the H factor, some have the R factor, and sometimes they can't really hide it. But for jobs like us, when you're in front of uh, people, uh, people listen to you, people watch you, people even learn from you, and um, somehow you have to be close to perfect in the way you pronounce most words you mm. get. You know, although some words are not are unforgivable, but there are some things you just have to know how to do right. I'm not trying to say, 
uh, if her layoff was justifiable, but I'm just saying that um, for a profession like um, broadcast journalism, you have to give your 100. You know, so, I mean, looking at that particular post and the reports, because it's been making the rounds, um, mm. I'm sure that a lot of people, including um, the person affected, mm. I'm not sure if she understands, you know, the dynamics. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it is what has happened. And she said she'd, she'd happened. worked like three places before. Yes. And there was never uh, uh, an issue. Yes, m m maybe because, you know, it probably wasn't noticed. I mean, like they had mentioned, because uh, there seemed to be an official statement, mm. you know, to this regard and the issue of the R factor, uh, what have you, and so you have a lot of people. That was misconduct and non-professionalism. I know. Come on. <laughs> Some people have said, so we have seen a lot of comments as regard this. Some people say that our factor come out so nice because, you know, you Does have it? a thing when you say you want to say the word rice and it says wise. You know, uh, you, so it comes you, with a W-I-C. So are, if the pronunciation. French, if you're French, I would have understood. You know, uh, French, they have um, this thing with their R as well. So it's the way they pronounce it. Don't say Fonser and all of that. You guys, so we are Nigerians. No, 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 but you, but, but, but you also, but I, I think that this is not to make an excuse, okay. especially when it has to with the job. But yes. we also need to understand that, you know, English language yes. is broad. Uh, it is not typical as. And so, for instance, like you talked about, so you're going to make an exception for a Frenchman because no, he's that's, saying... No, that, that's their language. They don't even have the typical R. Uh, there's a way they pronounce it. No, so, so I'm just saying know, so that are you are, going the, to... The average uh, uh, Frenchman will not even say rice, as it is. They say dohri. You know, that's how they pronounce it. So, so are you going to make an exception for no, all of those I'm other saying that uh, if you're going to a profession, you should know what it requires. Exactly. But I also, you would also say that we need to understand that, you know, it's you know, basically not... Uh, she should have worked on it. it. She said she had worked um, in three different places before now. That should have been, I mean, worked on. Or, there's a way you could actually conceal some things and not make it so very obvious. You know? mm, I, I really do not know how the R actually sounds, but I know that sometimes you want to call an R, you probably would say, you know, for instance, you have you words say, that oh, I have oh, 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 or stuff like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, so you wise. <laughs> Yeah, so it comes like, you say rice, you say wise. Right, I don't eat wise. Can I have rice? And some people say that sounds really nice. But Does it? <laughs> Mercy, you because can it say sounds like a baby. rice. And it sounds nice. Rice. Rice. Okay. <laughs> rice. So it's a lot, but unfortunately, it is what has happened. And uh, we're hoping that... But would you think her termination was actually wrongful? I can't say I'm not on her employer. <laughs> I, I'm not the one who hired her. As a journalist, as a broadcast journalist, what do you no, think? No, I can't really say. I, ca I can't say. Mm. I, I can't say. So because, you know, the organization made an excuse in the beginning. And they said they didn't understand the dynamics. Mm. First of all, they didn't notice it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we're hoping that it's spot on you who you probably would have actually noticed Sometimes that. Sometimes you might not, so. no, over time, it yeah, It's, it's okay. I'm, yeah. I'm sure the young lady is going to be... She's, she's going to be fine. Lady. She's going to be fine. Apparently, she'll be challenged, you know, to get the correct pronunciation. I mean, get not to say wise and say rise. I and don't know the, how the, the R lady, sounds. I, well, because <laughs> I, was speaking, I was speaking to our producer just before we came on and when she mentioned um, this issue because I didn't really get the story until she explained it to me. I was like, you know, for this profession of ours, you know, it is a very professional one. You have to be hands on. You have to be your 100 uh, because uh, people look up to, like I said, you educate people. People learn from you. Sometimes people listen to you to get the right pronunciation and to know how things are done. You know, so if, for instance, you love the broadcast journalism and uh, maybe you have some limitations or some inhibitions, uh, you should maybe... I'm just thinking the other aspect of it, you could do production, you could do No, but, but, but let's even, let's even be, uh, you know, it's a very, very sensitive one. And I'm yeah. also trying to just stay uh, so we don't miss the crocs at the end of the day. Mm. So I don't think that everyone in the industry is entirely perfect, including the best no, no of the best. Is. No one is. Right? Yeah. So we, we get to this point, including, you know, your favorite, international and local. Yeah. So we get to that point where everyone. And yeah. so... I just think that constant learning, trying to improve, would actually be the best thing. Okay, if you but, ask but, but, me. For instance, but, you, but people need to also understand the basics, right? Mm, yes. So which is it? Something might be confusing people. For instance, um, people, uh, you know, they misplace their R for, uh, the R for their L. You know, so sometimes 
if you have people who have such uh, issues, no, I haven't encountered anyone else. Uh, please else. get out of the load. So if you hear things <laughs> like that, no, the listeners might get so you confused. Get out of the load. Yes, it's of road. You know, get out of the road. Now get out of the load. But some people have this RL factor. Okay. Let me just leave that for a moment before I start. Um, you know, some people think I'm actually attacking um, a particular part of the country, but I'll leave it at that. Another um, issue that is um, also trending uh, is the president. Uh, he is in the news and he says, uh, Messi, that one is very, very arguable. He says uh, insecurity is, uh, <laughs> and the end to insecurity rather in Nigeria is in sight because a whole lot of people might. Well, what does that mean? Open. Meaning that. Uh, <laughs> Insecurity will no longer be an issue very soon that uh, we are actually maybe winning. If I have to paraphrase, you know, he, uh, the, uh, the, his um, uh, spokesperson, you know, quoted um, some territories that were taken before by insurgents and how they have been retaken, you know, by Nigerian military. And he said that uh, insurgency or insecurity is... Uh, the end to it is actually inside. But uh, a lot of people, back to agree, because of all the things that we go through, people are still in the kidnappers' den, people are still being kidnapped, people are still scared of uh, using some particular highways, and uh, people are scared of even traveling sometimes because they just don't know if they would actually get to their destinations. Hmm. So, um, I mean, it's uh, expected that, you know, speeches will be given, comments will be made, but it feels like there's always a disconnect. So I, I think that Nigerians should just get used to the fact that every other time we'd have the president make speech and give his, you know, he probably might just be a, at, at a certain gathering and then it's expected of him to make some comments or uh, presidential speech, the governor's speech, the speaker's speech. So there would always be statement, but it's unfortunate that some of the statements are not backed by actions. And so what's the essence of talking? I feel like we talk a lot. We make too many promises as and a country action. and then there's less action. It doesn't translate to the reality. And that's why a lot of people have queried whether there's a connect between you know, those who were calling the shorts, I mean, those who are ruling, the ruling class, you would want to say, the elite and, you know, those who have been ruled, what's the connect? Do you live in the same space? It's okay to wake up and say it's inside. What does that really mean? We have seen the actions every day and every other time. And this is not to sound as a prophet of doom, but, you know, by the end of the day, there will be a report of one, you know, security situation. The next day. Uh, Yes, there will be uh, an event that will happen today. It will be a security concern. Maybe Boko Haram, maybe the bandits, maybe some terrorists because they have been proscribed already. Of course, we still have a situation where we constantly call them, you know, bandits. There will be something somewhere. But it just feels like we are very comfortable with making some of these comments. But it's really, really heartbreaking because if you remember 2015, on the premise that you have this administration on board, it's on the premise of solving security issues. Security is top on the table, you have the economy, and you also have the fight against corruption. It was based on this premise that, you know, this government came on board. Now, let's look at it. There's a lot of comparison. If you want to talk, you have different um, spokesperson representatives, of the government who will come out saying the presidency, I mean, they will begin to make some comparison. So if you have something bad, I mean, it's not an excuse. So we begin to leverage on other, you know, experience and other incident that has happened. And we say, oh, in 2014, in 2013, it was worse. So we're having it better now because we had one person who died. Now we, we had two people dying, so we have one person. It doesn't really make sense. But like I always say, security is the primary reason that government exists. I would not necessarily say primary, but have you ever wondered why government exists? People came together and said, we'll to submit our the, wheel. To and, lives and, and so security is just basic. Securing the lives and properties of citizens is number one on the list for every government across the world. It's not just a Nigerian thing. It cuts across everywhere. A government that cannot protect lives and you know, the lives of her citizens and their properties, how do you begin to describe that government?
So it's still very arguable, end of terrorism in sight according to the president, but that's um, as much as we can take on top trending. Uh, top trending of course will return again tomorrow, but this time around we'll take a quick break and uh, we'll go straight to off the press when we return to join us again. <laughs>